Hey everybody, it's Comic Crack. And now that the stamp project's over, we're back with some regular comic type videos. Uh, today's video might be a little longer. Um, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll cut it into two parts. But uh, I've got a couple of small stacks of comics to show you um, and talk about my experiences buying online lately, which is what's been happening. Um, but first, today I'm filming this on May the 3rd, uh, and tonight I'm going to see Chester Brown uh, is in town giving a talk, uh, doing an interview, um, signing his new book. <clears throat> we have a local bookstore here called McNally Robinson. Uh, I think they also have, they've also now extended out to, I think that they have one, uh, a shop in Saskatoon and possibly Regina, or maybe it's just Saskatoon. I'm not exactly sure. Um, they've been around for quite a long time here in town. I used to go to the bookstore a lifetime ago when it was in a building that now has a coffee shop. Um, so it was a really small kind of store close to downtown. And I loved it uh, since the first day I walked in there, and it was mainly for the reason that they, they offered a lot of variety. Um, they had a lot of, I remember at the time, one of the things that I had seen that I'd heard about and actually saw them in person were these research books, um, if you know that series of books. Um, so looking at kind of all these different areas of, of books they, they offered, uh, they now, now that they're in a bigger spot, they offer a lot of great graphic novels. They even sell music, they sell movies. Um, their section on movies, their book section on movies is phenomenal. Uh, a lot of a lot of really great stuff. Uh, just a really fantastic store. They at one point they opened a second location, which is actually close to where I currently live, um, at one of the malls. But it didn't do so well, so they had to close it. Pardon me, which is too bad because that was a really nice spot. Um, it was enormous, but the mall that they were in is uh, Polo Park, and it's it's just not really a place where people are going, the, the crowds that you're getting there, they're not people that are going to look at bookstores. Um, it probably costed an arm and a leg to be at Polo Park because it's the, the biggest mall here in town. So unfortunately they had to close that one. The first location is still open which is at a smaller mall, a little bit of a drive from here, uh, Grant Park Shopping Center and it's, it's great. I mean I've been going there for years. Um, I really like supporting them uh, and as I said a lot of the stuff that I usually do want to buy online say it's Fantagraphics books or something like that I, I rarely have to uh, because if they don't have it they can easily get it for me but more often than not I, I, I have really good luck in finding really fantastic books that run the range there so they've been bringing in guests for many years uh, one of the first ones I ever saw there was um, uh, David Sedaris. I went to catch the tail end of him doing a reading uh, and then eventually he came back to do another reading at one of the bigger venues downtown actually. Uh, but it was a fantastic experience. Um, they always get writers in. They get all sorts of writers um, giving talks, reading poetry, reading from their books. Uh, there's always kind of like a meet and greet afterwards. So. This particular event is being, Chester is being interviewed about his, um, Mary, Mary uh, at the feet of Jesus, wash the feet of Jesus, sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on the name exactly right now, I won't look it up. Um, he's being interviewed by a woman who apparently runs a softcore pornography site in town. Uh, she's currently getting into directing movies as well. Um, and then I think she also works at a sex toy manufacturing place as well. Um, and the event is being sponsored by a, a group of escort workers who want to amend the laws to sex workers uh, to help protect the sex workers and to get the, get the word out there that not all sex workers are being forced into the business. There's a good chunk of sex workers that choose to do it themselves and do things a little differently. They're not, you know, they're not out there standing on street corners and, and strung out. They have a, a business, especially with the online stuff. So 
That said, it's going to be a very unique uh, event. A friend of mine who's also a fan of Chester Brown and I are going to go tonight. Um, I'm going to try to bring a copy of uh, an issue of Yummy Fur that I have. See if maybe he'll sign that as well as the book. I plan to buy the book there. Um, I'm assuming, I don't know what the deal is with writers. If when they come, I'm assuming that if you buy their book at the event, they get a little bit more of a cut of it as part of their kind of merchandise, merchandising for their tours. I'm, I'm assuming, I don't fully know the answer to that, but. So I'm really looking forward to that. My trip to Toronto for training is no longer going to coincide with the TCAF because um, he's also there as well. Uh, so at least I get a chance still to see him here in town, which will be great. Um, I'll, I'll try to take a couple of photos or something. I, I don't think I will be filming anything. Um, I'm not as comfortable, I think we've had this discussion before, you and I. I'm not as comfortable filming in public. Uh, I just, I don't know, I feel awkward about it. I feel a little strange about it, being the guy there with the camera trying to film strangers and stuff like that. I don't know. It just feels a little weird to me. Maybe that's a, a generational thing. I don't know. But I'll try to snap a few pictures um, and post them on the Twitter. Um, so that's that. That'll be a great event. Um, lately I've been doing some eBay hunting for underground comics. And as everybody knows, I'm sure, I'm, I'm completely late to every single party in existence. YouTube, Twitter, eBay, when it comes to all this kind of stuff. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, it's, a, it's a, a, an absolute treasure trove of comics of all kinds. Um, and the undergrounds are represented very, very healthily there. Um, I just had always shied away from it, A, because, as we've talked about before, getting things shipped to Canada here uh, most of the time just completely negates any sort of deal that I would have buying the book. Um, the classic example is, uh, uh, what's the place that Damien always uses? in stock trades. Some really great prices there, but usually the cost of the book is also the cost of the shipping just to get a book to me. So it turns out that I, I end up spending even more money. Um, so it no longer becomes a deal. It's, it's, better, it's a better option for me to go to my comic shop or go to my book shop or go to my record store and see if they can order it in for me. So they get, they cover the expense and I just pay for the item. Um, so I've normally shied away from buying comics online for that reason, plus also I don't hear a million of them, but I have heard a number of horror stories of people buying more expensive books and then them getting shipped in flimsy fucking envelopes and being damaged and, and honestly I just never really wanted to go through the hassle of that. Uh, that said though, there's been a couple of times now that um, I've had some, I've had stuff that I wanted to give a shot to, I wanted to give these people a shot. And what I normally end up doing is I'll look, uh, see how many items catch my attention, see what the shipping costs are that they're listing. Um, and actually there's been a few places that I've ordered from, there are people that I've bought from where the shipping was incredibly low. So it's been a lot of like, so I want to make sure that this is the actual shipping cost that you're going to charge me, that all of a sudden when I, if I do purchase something from you, that is shipping cost is going go, oh, well that was shipping to the United States it's going to be $20 and then I'm locked into it. And every time that I've had an experience so far, it's been, listen, I'm trying to buy these eight books or I'm trying to buy these 12 books or I'm trying to buy these four books or something like that. What will you do for me? And they've always given me a deal so far. Then I also ask how they package their books um, and then kind of give a rough idea of how I would like them packaged. If I'm going to buy these, I expect it sandwiched between two heavy pieces of cardboard, put in a really sturdy box, the space filled up with foam or paper or whatever you choose so things don't shift around. And I got another package this, mor this morning actually, uh, when we came home it was here in the mail, and they were packaged amazingly. Um, the first group of books that I'll show you is I've kind of stumbled onto a bit of a treasure trove. There was a guy who had a number of fantastic books listed. Um, I checked out, I kind of, I started following him as a seller on eBay and then looked at all the books that he was offering and there was a load of underground comics that he had so I started making a list 
ended up with a list of like 20 titles and cut that back to I think 13. Um, made him an offer. Some of the books were buy it now. Some of them were best, uh, our best offer. So I took them as a lot, made him an offer as a lot and just decided to see how it goes. Um, the shipping was I think $13 for 13 books which is amazing considering I'm mostly looking at $24, $25 when I get stuff shipped from the States. The other bonus is that it is in Canada, he's in Quebec, um, so there's the bonus of don't have to cross the border. I haven't been tagged in a long time as far as getting stuff from the border and having to pay like a duty fee. That hasn't happened to me in a very long time, but it, it's not like it's never happened. Uh, there's been a couple of times ordering from the States where it's been stopped, opened up, and while this is merchandise, we want our cut, you know, and all of a sudden I have to pay another $20 on top of it just to receive the package. So shipping within Canada, cheap shipping, an amazing selection of books, a super nice guy. Um, we've communicated a few times and the reason why we communicated a few times is that he's got an enormous, enormous collection of underground comics that he's looking to sell off. Like he sent me some lists, the fucking lists that this guy has of these books and magazines and comics and it's mind boggling and the selection of stuff that he has is equally mind boggling and he's a guy that's been collecting comics since the 60s and 70s and so some of the, the undergrounds that are in his collection are things that he's bought himself back then um, and then of course throughout the rest of his life it's it's stuff that he's picked up or collections that he's picked up that sort of thing but he's at the point where he's selling off his collection of underground comics so it's an enormous list and I, I kind of gave it a, qu a very quick look through his lists um, and of course saw a whole bunch of titles that were immediately appealing but figured, you know, let's start with this first small stack of books, see how things go, get some of the books in my hand, see what his grading is like, like what he said on, the, on eBay versus what they are in reality, see if we're on the same page about those things. Um, and just general quality, see how he ships things, that sort of thing. Give it a little chance before I commit to a, a lot of, a lot of books. Um, so they showed up yesterday, and I spent last night. I actually filmed this video last night, but um, as is the way lately, uh, screw it. It's, it's better to do it here with the daylight and uh, have my thoughts a little more organized. Um, one of the things that I've started doing as well is going to the Comics Joint website. Um, I, I know I've talked about it before. I'll, I think I've probably left the link in previous videos, but I'll make sure that I try to remember to, to, to leave the link in this description box as well. Phenomenal resource. It's a website that's always under the process of being written and built every single time that I go there. There's new things added, it feels like. He does some really great little write-ups about the individual comics themselves. Um, he'll put the title, he puts how many printings there are, um, when it was originally released, how many pages it is, uh, who, print, who uh, distributed it, who was the, the company behind it, and then a little blurb about if there's anything notable about the particular comic or about the particular artist. And then in historical footnotes he'll put um, how many copies were printed of each edition and then of course finally is uh, the comic creators who's involved with it uh, whether it's an anthology and if it's an anthology which pages their stories are on that sort of thing so I've decided to start doing that um, I decided to copy and paste that information to um, a file and then print it off and glue it onto the back of the backing board in these comics just so I can get like at a glance, um, especially, I decided to do it especially with this particular stack because I bought some books from this guy in Quebec that I'd never heard of before um, from artists that I don't, that I'm not really um, familiar with. So it was sort of while I was researching these books, um, came up with this idea of doing it. And I kind of like the way that it looks. Um, on the back of my backing boards, especially when I buy, lately, especially when I buy bigger books or I buy undergrounds, I've started for the past couple of years, I've been putting information where I bought it, um, the date that I bought it, how much I paid for it, and with the underground comics, 
if it's a first printing, second printing, 15th printing, whatever, that sort of thing. Just so at a glance I've got the information so I don't always have to crack open the books. I can get an idea from the back. Um, so yeah, the, the, the cataloging has reached a new level for me, basically. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look through this stack of books first. Then I'll talk about the stack I got today, and then at that point I'll probably turn the camera around and we'll have a look through some of the books because there's a couple in here um, that I, I really want, that you really need to see basically. Uh, some amazing books. Um, so overall, the, this guy from Quebec, just to finish that thought, uh, I'm really happy with the quality of the books. Some are even better than I thought they would be. Um, there's a couple that I was a little disappointed in and it might have been just my mistake of I didn't read closely enough. There's one for example that's along the spine at the bottom there's maybe like a one inch it's it's torn just up to the staple. Uh, the cover is still attached but is it the end of the world? No it's not the end of the world. Absolutely not. It's still readable. Um, but there's some things that even when I do buy uh, sexy grade and stuff. I don't like to buy books with rips in them normally. They can be wrinkled and miscolored and, and creased to hell. That's completely fine by me. But I like to have the staples attached. I, I don't like pages falling off. I want it to be a, a complete book even if the rest of it looks like utter shit. That's fine to me. So it was a good opportunity to kind of have uh, open a dialogue with him of like these are the books that I really like. These are ones where they had issues that I wasn't so crazy about. Just going forward from here, um, if you can keep that in mind and just let me know a little more details about these books before I buy them. Um, and then just had some kind of notes on the shipping. His shipping was fine. There was no damage. But again, it's one of those things, if, if I'm going to commit to buying a bigger stack of books from you, um, could it be, would it be possible if we did this, this, and this, you know, instead of packing it with newspaper, could you wrap it in like bubble, bubble wrap when you sandwich the books between the heavy duty cardboard, those kind of things, you know, just kind of minor details. Um, because I do fully intend to, probably not for another month or so, uh, buy a, a significant stack from him once I've kind of banked some extra bucks. Um, I might even dip into my savings that I have for the comic convention in November that was going to be used for Daredevil books might actually go to this. Um, and he's already said that, you know, as if I buy a load of books, he's more than willing to cut me a deal and, and work out a deal for me. So really nice guy. Um, I'm really excited about it, especially the fact, like I said, that it's within Canada. I don't have to deal with shipping in the fucking States to Canada and just all that that's just a, a royal pain in the ass. Okay, enough babbling. Let's have a look. So, uh, maybe I'll start with these actually, these magazines. There's a couple of things that I bought that weren't in my price guide. Um, and this first one not only wasn't in my price guide, I couldn't find too much information online about it. Uh, but it's a beautiful magazine. It's, it's in a, it's in, well-loved shape, which is fine by me. Um, it's a, a Wallace Wood Portfolio magazine, a Wally Wood Portfolio. Um, hopefully that's coming up, try to give you a little bit of a different angle there. Uh, so I don't know anything about the printing. I couldn't really find too much information about it. When I searched up Wallace Wood Portfolios, um, other portfolios came up. I guess there was a collection, a portfolio collection that uh, had come up mostly, um, but maybe I'll start digging a little deeper and see if I can find some more information about this one. Uh, it's really good. This is one that I'll, I'll kind of give you a peek through um, near the end of the video or in part two, whichever I decide to do. Um, along those lines of a portfolio, this, this next book, uh, kind of like a digest sized book, um, is by S. Clay Wilson and it's called Spots. And um, the stuff that's in here was originally published in Screw Magazine. Uh, single panels by S. Clay Wilson show him at his most dirty and disreputable. The most extreme of the Zap cartoonists of the late 1960s, Wilson draws maniacally dense scenes of lurid mayhem that rank among the seminal works of underground and counterculture American art. Uh, so it's, it's unbelievably dirty. Um, so probably when we get to that point, I, I'd like to show you little bits and pieces 
of some S. Clay Wilson. I'm really glad to have some actual S. Clay Wilson stuff in my collection now. Um, books that are solely done by him. And the other one that I got that is done by him is the Checkered Demon uh, number one. Um, and this one is, is, it's a little bigger than comic size, but it's turned on its side, so I had to stick it in a magazine bag and a board. Um, July 1977, uh, 36 pages. This is the one and only printing of this. Um, I think he had three, I think there was three issues of the Checkered Demon. So this is fantastic, and this is the same kind of thing. It's, it's almost, um three or four panel type strips that would have been in like a, an underground newspaper I'm guessing I don't know because it doesn't say on the back um, on the the comics joint site it doesn't specify where these originally came from so but that's incredible I love having some S. Clay Wilson um, next focus is I, I really want to get some Spain Rodriguez like Trash Man or Subvert comics I think I saw a few of those on this guy's list um, I'd love to see some of his artwork in person as well. So as far as a mixed bag of things, this is one of those books that I previously have no experience with uh, by a guy named John, John Thompson. Looking at his artwork, it's very familiar to me. Uh, so I might have seen him in, a, in an anthology before or something. But this is from 1969. And it is the print mint that put this out in December of 1969. And it's called The Book of Raziel. Um, the, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Book of Raziel is apparently about the angel Raziel, the angel of mysteries, who authored the original Book of Raziel, reputed to contain the key to the mysteries of the universe. Legend has it that the original book was inscribed on a sapphire stone in a language so ancient and arcane that not even the greatest scholars of ancient language were able to decipher it. This seems logical as I can hardly decipher what the hell John Thompson is writing about in this comic. As always though, there are lots of exquisite illustrations to be discovered in this mysterious tome and the it really is beautiful artwork in here. Um, this is another one I'll, I'll kind of flip through. Um, Apparently there was only 10,000 copies printed and just one printing, so that's pretty amazing to have as well. Um, and it's in really nice condition. This is one of those that has a little bit of tear on the spine that, I mean, I'm glad I picked it up anyway, but um, I wish it was a little, a little bit of a higher grade. It's, again, it's all these things to keep in mind later. Um, and out of this stack, this is probably the highlight for me. Um, it's in beautiful condition. It's by an artist that I absolutely love, Greg Irons. Greg Irons did a lot of stuff for Skull um, and Slow Death, but specifically Skull, and I've seen him a lot in kind of horror anthologies. I'm a real big fan of his work. Um, apparently he was getting into becoming a tattoo artist as well and something that I didn't know about him that's written that was on the uh, comics joint site was tragically Irons was killed in Bangkok Thailand in November 1984 when he was struck by a bus um, and he was 37 years old this was the one and only printing from June 1971 and it's called light um, and I'm telling you, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. This is 100% one that we will spend the time. I will take you through every single page in this. It's, it's mostly a wordless, almost art comic to some degree. Um, I guess in 1965, he had written a book as well called uh, The Louis Armed Story. Um, and there's an excerpt from that in the back cover of this. I guess it was printed in Ger or published in Germany, first published in Germany in 1965, and considered an avant-garde masterpiece at the time. It is a novel chronicling the armed family's strange quest for spiritual salvation, cosmic truth, and chili con carne across the Americas. Uh, Tom Veach and Dave Sheridan also make brief uh, appearances in this as well. Dave Sheridan collaborates on a, a, a drawing with him. Uh, so June 1979, uh, 1971 rather, and it's in such amazing condition. And it's also its color on the inside too, which is something else that's fairly rare, which is why the 75 cent price tag at the time. Um, 
but it's a beautiful book and it makes me wonder if he did anything else that was similar to this that were just maybe more art books because uh, you'll see that the style it blows me away it's again I mean this whole kind of exploring these underground comics ha again after so long being away from them and really diving into them I'm rediscovering some things that are just really speaking to me incredibly intensely uh, Guy Caldwell the, the inner city romance number three there um, I couldn't believe that I was reading something like that it's the same with this I've looked through this book now probably three or four times um, and just looked at every single page and checked out all the little details and looked at the colors and I, I absolutely love it it's a real highlight um, so if you ever do see this um, I wouldn't hesitate for a split second this is the highlight of this batch for me or one of the highlights of this batch there's a few but um, I absolutely love that so one of the other anthologies that had three different volumes um, was uh, Death Rattle. The first volume was 1972 and 1973. It was only three issues. And then I think, what did it say? Uh, it doesn't say here. Sorry, one second. Uh, Twelve years after the last one came out was when Volume 2 came out. And I've got a number of Volume 2 and Volume 3's books. Um, they're, you know, these underground anthologies are something special. I mean, they, you can see their love for kind of that EC style of storytelling. Um, this one has a particularly uh, amazing story in it by a guy, Tom Boxell, uh, and it's called I Have Eternal Life and It's Killing Me, about this guy who is in a bar, an old timer comes up to him and asks him for a drink. In return for the drink, he'll, he'll give him the secret to eternal life. Um, the guy kind of laughs it off buys the guy a drink, the old timer gives him a, a phone number on a piece of paper and says call this number and you'll get the secret.